A two-sport athlete, Allison Schertz Howe was an All-American midfielder for the Heron soccer team and a small forward for the basketball team. On the pitch, Allie helped the Herons to a four-year record of 69, 9, and 8, earning four consecutive NCAA tournament bids. She produced 36 goals and eight assists for 80 points. Allie contributed a goal and an assist as a first year and bumped up her production to six goals and two assists as a sophomore. She broke out with 15 goals, fourth on the single season list at that time, and four assists during her junior year. In the fall of Allie's senior year, the Heron soccer team went unbeaten in the regular season, carrying a 16-0-1 record into the NCAA tournament. Allie scored the team's first goal that postseason, propelling William Smith past Denison 3-1 and launching the Herons on a trek to the national semifinals. Allie was named to the 1993 NCAA All-Tournament team and closed out her soccer career fourth on the school's career goals list and fifth on the points list. She was in the Empire Athletic Association Soccer Player of the Year after leading the conference in both goals and points. The National Soccer Coaches Association of America recognized Allie's efforts with first team All-American status as well as Adidas Scholar All-American honors. Allie played three seasons on the hardwood, missing her junior year to participate in a study abroad program. She helped William Smith go 70 and 13 with two NCAA basketball tournament appearances. A team member on the first 20 win season in school history, Allie contributed 3.8 points per game and 2.3 rebounds per game as a reserve. The following season, she moved into the starting lineup and the Herons went 24 and 4 and earned the program's first NCAA berth. As a senior starter with outstanding leadership skills, Allie helped the Herons to a program record 25 wins against just three losses. William Smith won the EAA, was second in the state tournament, and returned to the NCAA tournament. In her senior year, Allie was named the EAA Female Athlete of the Year in a team sport. A standout in the classroom as well, Allie earned a long list of scholarships and academic awards from William Smith. She helped the soccer team earn the Dean's Award in 1993 and graduated with a bachelor's degree in biology. She went on to earn her medical degree from SUNY Buffalo Medical School in 2000. Since 1996, Dr. Allison Schertz Howe has served in the U.S. Air Force, including eight years on active duty and plans to retire next month. She practices family and sports medicine in Portland, Maine, and also serves as the head physician for the U.S. Women's Hockey National Team. A native of nearby Batavia, New York, and currently living in Portland, Maine, Allie was inducted into the Batavia Blue Devils Hall of Fame in 2014. It is my honor to present Allison Schertz Howe as a member of the Heron Hall of Honor, Class of 2016. cannot independently validate that any of that was true. It seemed like ancient history. I don't even remember half of that, but I'm good. <laughs> Too many headers, perhaps, but anyway. <laughs> on to the evening. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to start with something that may be a little bit uh, outside of the ordinary and let you guys know that it wasn't all awesomeness. Uh, truthfully, the way I would start this is I don't think this should have been me, or at least by all accounts and all calculations, it shouldn't have been me who's standing here today. I arrived to college soccer preseason in the fall of 1990 very raw and less than prepared. I had some natural talent and definitely a competitive nature, but I had honestly no idea how to use it. I struggled transitioning to the faster college game. I felt intimidated, slow, confused. I can recall a note from Alice Ann before one of our first games that fall. She had given everyone a card that started with, what are you made of when? I know she's covering her eyes, but this was like turning point for me. <laughs> Mine ended with, when you make a mistake. She saw that a mistake would derail me. It would cause me to lose focus, and worse, focus on others' mistakes instead of my own. I hit rock bottom that fall when one of our coaches, cough, cough, Dave Carwick, <laughs> yelled at me from the sideline to get my mark and get your head back in the game. And I yelled something back at him that I don't recall, but I know it was rude and definitely inappropriate. I was taken out of the game, and I took my seat on the bench, and I got a chance to think about it for a long time. I'm not sure how many of you have heard of Alice Ann's talented retelling of fables before each of our games. She was magical in getting us to learn and apply a moral to improve our play. 
If you haven't heard her retelling of the wide mouth frog, I would have to say you haven't fully lived. <laughs> My kids want me to tell that tonight, but there's no way, because I could never do it justice. Along the theme, though, I wanted to share a story with you. Once upon a time, there was an athlete com who complained to her soccer coach that her life was miserable and she didn't know how she was going to make it. She was tired, struggling all the time. It seemed just as one problem was solved, another one soon followed. Her coach, a bright educator, took her to the kitchen. She filled three pots with water and placed each on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, she placed potatoes in one pot, eggs in the second pot, and ground coffee in the third. She then let them sit and boil without saying a word to her player. The player moaned impatiently and waited, wondering what she was doing. After about 20 minutes, she turned off the burners. She took out the potatoes and eggs and placed them in a bowl. She ladled the coffee and placed it in a cup. Turning to the player, the coach asked, player, what do you see? Potatoes, eggs, and coffee, she hastily replied. Look closer, the coach said, and touch the potatoes. She did, and noticed they were soft. She then asked the player to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. Finally, the coach asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. Coach, what does this mean, she asked. The coach explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and the coffee had each faced the same adversity, the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently. The potato went in strong, hard, unrelenting. But in boiling water, it became soft and weak. The egg was fragile, with a thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put in boiling water. Then the inside of the egg became hard. However, the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. Which one are you, she asked her player. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? The moral, in life, things happen around us, things happen to us, but the only thing that truly matters is how you choose to react to it and what you make out of it. Life is all about learning, adapting, and converting all the struggles we, we, that we experience into something positive. So while I sat there embarrassed on the bench after yelling at my coach, it finally hit me. No one's going to just give it to me. Being a part of this team at this school was going to take more than I had ever given, but not more than I had to give. This was my problem to fix, and I had all the tools I needed right in front of me. Basketball season with my new understanding went much better that fall. Vita and Mo were our seniors who led with great maturity and understanding. They provided a canvas where younger players could learn to use and improve the talents they had. They showed us how to put the work in to be successful, and I finally started to get it. I started to believe that I could provide more. I could make positive change for the team by changing myself. Our hair and soccer and basketball teams were tremendously talented, and we had some amazing run of victories. We were the team to beat for most of my years at William Smith, and that is really special. After college, I went on to join the US Air Force as a way of paying for medical school. And to be honest, in joining the military, I really was most interested in seeing if I could get through boot camp. Let me set the record straight. Those military officers have nothing on Alisan. <laughs> in fatigues and combat boots, I ate crickets, and I slept out in the rain, and nothing hurt as much as my thighs during those three days in Geneva in August. <laughs> Next month, I retire from the Air Force after 20 years. I continue... <laughs> Thank you. I uh, continue to carry my hair and intensity and work ethic with me in all that I do. Look, I never once scored a goal or a basket that didn't come from someone else's great play. I believed I could do anything because my coaches and teammates believed I could too. I owe every accomplishment to these people around me who made it possible. Thank you to my numerous teammates, especially to the class of 1994, many here today. Bart, M, JD, Milmil, Oak, Pax, Springer, Stoner, <laughs> That's for real. Krista, <laughs> TL, Yo, and Nikki, you have always inspired me to give more. My coaches, Glenn and Sally, Dave, and especially Alice Ann. 
If you want people to follow your lead, then you need to lead by example. I couldn't have asked for better role models. It's only right that I single out one teammate who made the biggest impact on me as a player. Playing next to and behind Ann Haggerty was a terrific challenge and a gift for me. Thank you to Hags. By competing with me every single day, without ever, and I do mean ever, giving me a break, she allowed me to become the player I was. Sam and Mary Lee, Greg and Luke, you've always made me feel like I was a part of your family in Geneva, and you've left my family with a permanent home here that keeps us returning whenever possible. My husband Dave and children Lucy, Charlie, and Sam, I'm very lucky to have a family that loves me very deeply. Dave has been telling my kids how great I am for their entire lives. <laughs> I'm very glad I can finally produce some hardware to support the case. <laughs> Ray Shirts, my dad, my biggest fan. He always excelled at finding the positive and letting people know they are appreciated. I can't explain what it meant to have you there watching me play all those years. I hope you feel honored tonight as well because we share in this 100%. So on all accounts, it shouldn't have been me. I could have washed out, but I didn't because I learned, actually I was taught, how to play the Heron way. No excuses. Put in the work. Own it. Adapt, adjust, be resilient, lead by example, turn negatives into positives. Run six sections as if it's your most favorite thing in the world to do at that moment. <laughs> I learned how to work hard, whether at practice or in the classroom. I learned how to get more from each other by expecting more of myself. And that's made all the difference for my athletic career of long ago and for my life as I continue to grow today. This event is truly one of the greatest honors I could receive and I'm forever grateful to be a part of the Heron family. I think it's important to note how amazing it was to be a Heron in the 1990s when it was not just okay for girls to play sports, but it was okay for girls to actually be fierce and gritty and intense. I realize how lucky I was to have had the female athletes who came before us pave the way for our future successes and I do not take for granted the privilege that came with being a Heron. Congratulations to my talented induction teammates. It is such a privilege to celebrate with you. So in closing my recommendation to you, the moral, go out there, make a difference, be the coffee bean, be a Heron.